In 1982, the first basketball shoe with Nike Air technology made its debut. Designer Bruce Kilgore designed the shoe. You know what shoe it is? The Air Force One. It is. And in the year 2021, the ladies decided to switch things up a bit. Mm, man, it smells good. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look at these bad ladies right here. This is the Nike Air Force One Pixel for women only. Although you can wear it if you like it, you know what I mean? I'm sure that they come in a range of sizes. And this is a new redesigned version of the classic Air Force One made by women for women. I think that these are really interesting. I saw these about a week ago and uh, I almost bought them for Mrs. Wing and then I didn't because I know sometimes when I do that, she's like, why did you buy me these? And so I decided, and know what? I don't know if these are her stees. So I just left it there. And then we both went into Phenom the other day and and she was like, oh, these are cute. And I was like, yes, I knew it. You know what I mean? Like I felt so accomplished that at that moment. Cause like for one, I didn't fuck up by buying you something that you didn't want. And on top of that, you actually did want it. And I thought that you might, it was a glory moment as a guy. So again, these are a redesigned version of the Air Force One made by women for women. And I think that this is pretty cool, man. Like they are an interesting new take of the Air Force One, which is a classic. It's a staple. Nelly made a song about it back in the day, back in our day. And uh, yeah, man, they're still around. They're still kicking. Retro is big. Retro is bigger than ever. You know, those people that were uh, like into a band before they got popular. It's like that. We're like, I've loved things from my childhood, which is the 80s, always. And it's like, finally, everybody's catching up. So first things first, look at that outsole. You got that pixelated look. This is probably one of the best ones. There's only three colorways that I've seen so far. There's a white on white. There's this one, which is, I don't know what color this is. Particle beige. I knew that's what it was going to be. I wasn't sure if it was going to be that or barely rose. They look the same to me. It's a go-to Nike color. Especially as, as of late, like, like the last, what, five, six years. And there's also a maroon one, which we both were like, ooh, now those are dope. So I really like that. But this sole right here actually shows you the pixelated look because they, you know, make it pretty blatant. I like these. I wouldn't wear them, but I just like them, you know? So the sole right here is tweaked from an original Air Force One, but not to the point to where you wouldn't know that that was an Air Force One sole. It's where you get up to the midsole section of the cup sole where you're like, holy crap, it looks like Tetris, man. It's cool. So yeah, I really dig this. They're also doing stuff like this with the dunk too. There's some dunks with like weird sh all over the cup sole and stuff. I don't like those. I wouldn't wear that either. I just think that it's cool that they're changing things in a way where they're appealing to more people. Because I don't even know if you've liked Air Force Ones until right now. Like this is your first pair, isn't it? That's the first one I've ever seen that spoke to me. There you go. Job well done, Nike. That's exactly what they're going for. I do think it's really interesting because the cup sole is, is a little bit different, like clearly visually different, but also implementation of like the manufacturing and everything. Typically it's made like a Jordan one or a dunk where it's a cup sole, which is all rubber, everything, the entire, it cups the midsole or the wedge that's inside and then they stitch it all the way around and that stuff makes it so that you can actually wear something from the 80s today because it's still stitched onto the upper it doesn't crumble like polyurethane does but the stitching right here starts right there and then it ends right there so it's like a like a jordan 3 or jordan 4 and then they got a little bit of extra stitching right here in the back and that's it it's like really weird but it's really cool because it plays off on the original heritage of the model but still clearly something different i like this little part right here a little bumper and the stars are like super heavy and stuff these are sick man the upper is also different, but familiar enough. So what we have here is something very similar to the recently released Jordan 1 Zoom Comfort, where they took off the swoosh paneling and the branding is still there based off of the cut. You know, the cut is there so you can see underneath it. I do think that they could add something very special under there if they wanted to. 3M, glow in the dark, clear plastic, iridescent, all kinds of stuff, man. Like they could really play up on that and still have clean colors just like this, like tonal colors. I'm pretty sure you're going to see a lot of these coming out. And if they don't do that, then, you know, you should. I just gave you like a bunch of options for free. People pay big money for consulting like that. Hit me up. They're just going to let you keep making videos. They're just, yeah, they're just going to keep poaching the ideas instead. They're like, thank you. Thank you. I hope they send us a fruit basket. No, they don't send us anything. That's terrible. And the leather on these guys is actually quite nice. I'm pretty surprised because a lot of the basic Air Force Ones, the black on blacks, the white on whites, typically just, you know, it's like a mixture of synthetic and actual leather. It's what I like to call a composite leather. So I like the little lace dubray. Also adds to the pixel, you know, look and everything. They got a new logo. I don't think I like that. I like classic branding, so I would not have been mad had they have left the regular branding on there. So you have two different new styles of logos. This left shoe right here has Nike in blocks. And then this guy right here on the right shoe says Air Force One. I do like that. I like how it's a Nike Air Force One. Like when you put them together. They also changed up a little bit of the regular hole punches or the perforations and everything. So the eye stay area are squares instead of circles, which is kind of cool. Again, adds to the pixel thing. Also, the interior is nicely sculpted. It's got a nice little amount of padding, not too much, just enough. And it feels like it's a nice little satin liner in there and stuff. So I like that. I do wish the tongue was nylon. It is leather, which is a nice material, but nylon is classic. That's the only thing. If they added a little more classic elements to them, you know, like classic branding, classic tongue, that would have really been like, man, that's dope. And maybe the ladies want something different. I don't know. 
no, I'm not a girl. So as far as fit goes. Holy sh when did you get here? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. These fit, I hear, typically like a traditional Air Force. I've never had a pair, so when I went in, I asked for my regular size six, and I was just like, hmm. And so I ended up going down half a size like most people do in Air Force Ones. That's what I recommend. Some people go true to size, that's cool if that's you. Some people wear shoe trees, or they're not shoe trees, what are they called? Shields. Force fields or something Force like that. Force shields. Yeah, something like that, I don't know, I don't wear that. But like, you can put that thing in there, you can go up half a size, you'll be fine, it'll cover you with creases. Well, we've had to go and purchase, because Air Force Ones are always popular. Yeah, we purchased a number of them for our daughter. And all the guys in the shop are like, oh, you're gonna wanna go down half a size. So I feel mm -hmm. like a it, lot of people say to go down half a size. There is. There's a lot of people though that try to say like, no, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, and that's fine. Like, you can just say what you do, you know? Like, you go true to size, that's cool. And uh, yeah, so for me personally though, I recommend going down half a size. That's clearly what you did based off of you trying on. Yeah. And you're a wide footer on top of that, which is really interesting because I wouldn't have said, hey, if you're a wide footer, go true to size, but you still went down half a size. Sometimes I get nervous because mm -hmm. I don't like, and we got these at Phenom and so they know us and mm -hmm. they have no problem like going and getting you various sizes, but I still hate being like, can you go get me another size? Yeah. And so. That's what I love about big box stores. Yeah. Is like you can go in, you can do things yourself. You don't have to like ask somebody to technically like wait on you and because I don't like that you're like nah these don't work go give me another one like I'm like bro that's like that's mean like I'd rather be like nah man I'm good I, I got this yeah you know? and I'm also a person of comfort and I happen to be wearing a pair of shoes that I have very much broken in and so I had originally put on the five and a half and I was just like I don't know can I have the six and then I got the six and I was just like mm, they felt fine then but then walking around I could feel the flopping mm -hmm. so I was just like okay let me put back on the five and a half this guy here is like trying to make the shoe look all perfect and I'm like, I need it back. <laughs> oh, my bad. It was a display shoe, that's why. Yeah. I was trying to put it back to a display form. But um, yeah, I am happy with the size I ended up with. Yeah, these are a shoe where when you break them in, like a Jordan 1, or like most shoes made out of leather, you get them in your true size, you break them in, they'll feel great. You just yeah. gotta give them some time. Most people go up half a size because they're impatient. They don't wanna do the deal with the breaking process, which I know does suck, but it's just part of the game. But I think these are dope. And it's cool that this is your first pair because yeah. it took them long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, almost 40 years to sell you on one. I know. That's a long ass time. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about this. It took them almost 40 years to sell her one pair of Air Force One. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. It took a female's touch. Back to the drawing board, guys. Yeah, for real. And they've done all kinds of shit to the Air Force One. And it's this one where she's like, oh, those are cute. And I thought she was going to say that. I'm so happy that you actually like these. So anyways, that pretty much takes care of it for these. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. I'm going to hand these off to her. She's going to do the on foot thing. And uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you're interested in grabbing a pair, again, they're available right now over at Phenom, just in this colorway, but I believe Nike.com has the other, like all three. Um, the maroon ones. The maroon ones are pretty fresh. So are the all white ones. They're all cool looking, okay? Thank you so much once again for watching and until next time, guys, have a good one.